Hi everyone and welcome to our 19th Kentigo CMS podcast. I'm Tom Robbins, your host. Moving your site visitors effectively into the funnel is one of the most important things any marketer worries about. What are the best practices? How can you leverage your data? I know these are just the few of the things that I lose sleep over. Learning to analyze your target audience, create more effective conversion funnels, and glean actionable insights that produce measurable results are the holy grail of today's internet marketing. In this show, we talk with Ben Cash, veteran internet marketing consultant and the owner and creative director of Blue Key Web Solutions, a Kentico Gold partner, to hear examples and best practices and different ways that every marketer can get more sleep at night using Kentico EMS. Hi, Ben. Thanks for joining me. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me. I'll give you a little disclaimer here. I'm recovering from the flu, so hopefully I won't spread my uh, virus uh, through the podcast here, but uh, bear with me. I am the owner and creative director of Blue Key. We're a web design and development firm um, based out of Charleston, South Carolina. We do uh, digital marketing and e-commerce and mobile application development and web design and development and whatnot. And uh, as far as myself, a little bit about me, I came at this through a, a, a different uh, background than, than most. You know, there's no real degrees for what we do. I actually have a background in music, and I think that it, that taught me to approach things from a more creative, right brain perspective in that technique serves creativity. You know, what, what are you going to say in the music with your technique, uh, and I think that that logic applied to uh, what I do now. In that, you know, software and websites and apps and all those kind of things are just tools uh, that ultimately serve creative thinking, and that creative thinking is really is what what drives success. I think too too often people think of websites and even Kentico as the, the solution when in actual when in actuality it's just a tool, uh, and creative thinking is what is what should drive success. I think that's very true. I know you guys do a lot with marketing. What kind of challenges are you seeing with marketers today? You know, I think uh, often today one of the biggest challenges is just getting clients to understand the potential and educating them. You know, I think uh, things are changing so fast that people have sort of old world thinking as far as traditional marketing methods, and they don't realize some of the new opportunities that are out there with digital marketing. You know, for example, they might think of you know, a website in more terms of a brochure rather than than a than a conversion oriented, action oriented tool can generate results. Or they don't realize that uh, you can't improve what you can't measure. That's sort of one of the phrases that we live by. And they don't really track anything or measure anything. They don't really realize that that's one of the big differentiators for digital marketing is that they can track everything that they do, unlike traditional marketing methods. And so I think that's I think that's very important. I think also there are so many choices and tools uh, out there nowadays with you know all the different digital marketing channels and social media and SEO and PPC and you know throw as many <laughs> acronyms as you, as you can at these people. And I think there's sometimes it's an, it's an o- sense of overwhelming, too few resources, too many opportunities, too many things to do. And I think people often don't narrow it down into a few areas that they can be effective and also narrow it down to where their customers are actually going. They try too many things and uh, become jack of, you know, uh, master of none and jack of all. So No, and that that's true. Now, I know you, you did a, a fantastic webinar for us, which for those people listening, I'll, I'll definitely include a link. You guys have a, a, a process that you use that's been pretty successful. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Um, we have a, a process we developed called ERIC, Engage, Route, Inform, Convert. That is a way that we turn websites from brochures to more conversion-oriented tools. We sort of think of it as, you know, the, the same old-world concepts of, of, a, of a sales conversation and sort of, you know, uh, building trust with a customer when you're, when you're asking them to make that sale or take that action uh, applies in the digital world. And so we really try to build these digital conversations, whether it be, you know, creating conversion funnels or making you know clear calls to action, or really you know most importantly engaging clients and customers on their terms, and really understanding them. So to that end, we have you know before we even get into the whole Eric process, we really uh, try to break down the different target audiences and see what makes them tick. And that's sort of the the, the cornerstone of, of of what we do. Because in the end, we're not building the sites and tools for our clients; we're building it for their customers. And I think the the second thing I would say is that one of the biggest mistakes that clients make is that that uh, they forget that there's uh, life after launch, and that process is really the you know the paramount thing in in uh, getting results. And so often you know what we what we talk about with clients you know is that that once the once the site is built, their work really begins, 
And that, that process is first, you know, creating a, a conversion oriented site with great content, you know, content that people want. Second would be to generate a buzz and drive traffic. You know, that's generating a buzz through, you know, various channels, whether it be email marketing, social media, search engine marketing, offline, in a variety of, uh, of ways. And then the biggest mistake people make there is not they don't drive traffic to the website. They go there to drive to the website because that's where conversions are. Third step would be to track and measure. To you know, to, to get as much data as you can from as many sources, and that's where Kentico is a great tool because of the EMS tracking and, and reporting tools within the CMS. And then you know, the fourth one is to glean actionable insights from the data. Uh, it's not enough just to notice, hey, our traffic's gone up, or I see some a spike in this area or something. To we'll really get information, try to glean those insights from that data that translates to actions which would then lead you to adjust, make create new content, change the way your website works, change the flow of the digital conversation, and make and basically adjust. And then the last step would be to simply repeat. I think people, when well, they go through that process once and they don't realize that it's a circular process and that you go back to the beginning and create content and then you generate a buzz and drive traffic, etc. So create conversion oriented websites and, and follow a process after launch. For marketers listening to this, what are a couple of, of best practices or things that they should take away? I know you talked earlier about the, the measurement capabilities and, and you talked a lot about social media. What, what do you think are some of the really big best practices that marketers need to be concerned about today? Well, you know, I mean, that's <laughs> that's a whole podcast in itself. Um, to narrow this down, I, I would say one of the first and foremost, it's you can you can't improve what you can't measure, and I think people need to be collecting as much data as they can. And again, that's why uh, we, you know, uh, Kintico, the EMS, uh, are great tools because it allows you to really understand. Uh, not just the traffic that's coming into your website, like you can get from Google Analytics, but actually to, to track and understand the user behavior while they're on the website and, and really think about lead nurturing. And uh, and that kind of data is very, very valuable. I think a lot of people often, even when they are using data or doing other things you know, with, with uh, tracking tools and things, it's often more the traffic coming into the website and then, they, and then it gets stuck into a CRM, which is great because you get some, some data there. But that, that middle level of user behavior customer experience is is crucial and I think why Kentico is such a, a valuable tool in that respect. You know, I think uh, as far as search engine marketing, I think one of the things that people often do to the detriment is they is they get, you know, stuck constant changes in the algorithm in, in Google and, and uh, you know, think about keywords too much and whatnot. And I think, you know, one of the, the overriding principles that we try to live by is just create good good content for, you know, for searchers. I mean, Google's goal is ultimately to Find, uh, you know, provide the best, most relevant content for their searchers. And if you're, if you, if your goal is to provide that rich content, Google's going to reward you for that. If you try to game your website and your digital presence with, you know, uh, the latest algorithm changes or the latest fads, you're, you're going to might have some spikes, but long term, it's not a good solution. So, create good content that people want, and uh, you'll get, you'll be rewarded for it. So is there any techniques that you would recommend for creating good content that you've seen that maybe has worked on a couple of your projects? Uh, sure. Um, well, you know, I mean, good content is uh, is relative. And I think, you know, people, you know, you need to think about your target audiences and what do they value. You know, if, you know, people use the web now for, for research often, then how can you help people make decisions, provide answers and information and, and, and things there, or, or entertain people? You know, people want to uh, be entertained at the same time, and uh, and so you know, creating fun, informative uh, content is is also a, a, a good approach. I would also suggest things that people can take away with them, helpful tools, downloads, you know, things that can solve problems. It's it's relative, and I think I think you know, if I could just give one main point, it would be to think about your target audiences. You know, what is valuable content to them? And then create it and give it to them. One is very focused on social media these days. Do you have any thoughts about what's the most relevant social media channel? Where should people be focusing? You know, I have customers that are looking at things like Pinterest over Twitter. I mean, are there any things you, you might recommend as ways of making decisions around that? I think you just need to figure out where your customers are, you know, and I think it can be as simple as doing a survey, you know, of your, of your customers, you know, sending out a survey, you know, how many of you use the following channels and just list them out, you know, start trying each of the channels and seeing what sort of, you know, results you get or what sort of, you know, what, what becomes more viral and what, what has a, a, a further reach, but testing and, and just simply asking those questions, doing that research. And then 
yourself too thin. I think uh, focusing on the channels or channel uh, is you know where you can have the most impact, where your where your voice will be will you know resonate. I think that's that's the key. I, you know, I also think one of the biggest mistakes people make about social media is that they forget that it's social. And they, they think of it as just a megaphone to sort of disseminate information. And I think, you know, if you relate that to sort of a networking, a social networking event, you know, the, the people who walk up to you and, and sort of talk about themselves exclusively, you, you never really, uh, you know, you take with a grain of salt and you generally want to get away from the conversation. So, you know, be social, listen to people, talk about others, promote others. And those same real world things that uh, are social etiquette, you know, applies online. But it, it's social. Have a conversation. The other big thing is I know you guys have been doing uh, some EMS projects. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the success that you're seeing with EMS and, and recommendations for people who might be looking at EMS? Sure. That's a good question. Yeah. The EMS is a phenomenal tool, um, like I said before, because it, it really fills in the gap of user behavior and some of the, the, the new version 7 with the marketing automation tools really help extend, um, you know, what clients can do. You know, I think one of the challenges I was going to mention earlier about marketers and what they're facing is, you know, people are having to do more with less nowadays. And, you know, I think the marketing automation tools really help to allow people to, to communicate and, and market to a, a, a more intelligent marketing to a much larger audience with fewer resources because everything can be automated and, and, uh, and uh, reports can be generated. And I think that's, that's very important. As far as, you know, we've got a couple, uh, project we're working on right now, for example, with uh, Lawn and Garden Center. And the, the great thing with this client is that they, they get it, they see the potential, and they're willing to devote the time and resources. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't really think about life after launch, and um, they, they aren't willing to, to, to dedicate the time and resources. So generally what I would suggest with, uh, with this uh, in using the EMS and what we're sort of doing with this one client is first defining clear goals and actions. Um, for example, with this client, you know, they had a, some very clear uh, actions like landscape request or uh, requesting mulch delivery or uh, driving more traffic to the store uh, locations. Uh, but they have clear goals, clear actions that they want to um, that they want to uh, elicit. They also have m- multiple channels that they're using, whether it be SEO and PPC through search engine marketing or email marketing. They have a very large list of about I think twenty thousand uh, customers they built up. And also they have a highly traffic blog, which they create great content for gardening topics. And they have a, a, a robust offline marketing campaign as well. So, you know, diversifying your the, the channels and then tracking those uh, those different sources through the EMS is, is very easy and, and very uh, makes it for more success. And I think one of the things also to think about with the EMS is that, uh, and what we're doing with this particular client, is that, you know, we set up unique campaigns for new customers. So, for example, if, you know, SEO and PPC and, and, and you know, search engines, for example, are, are great source for new customers, then it's great to use some of the lead qualification and lead nurturing tools in the EMS to sort of um, to vet those different uh, leads and, and, and spend time with the ones that have more potential than short traffic and bounced, bounced away. And also to think about the EMS from the perspective of existing customers, meaning ways that you can constantly maintain you know, communication and touch with the customers through email marketing, through blog, through coupons for the store, deals, etc., and I think there, the marketing automation tools are what are really key to, and to think about in that you can automate the uh, ongoing communication with your customers and, and get lots of great data on that. But if I had just some general recommendations for the EMS uh, for people to think about, uh, I would just remind them that it's just a tool, that you know, while it's a great tool, it is just a tool, and that planning, strategic thinking, and resources are how you're going to actually be successful with the EMS. A couple, a couple other things. Uh, first, you want to define your goals, your measurable KPIs or key performance indicators. You want to think about your, what are your current and future benchmarks. And ultimately, most importantly, how is success going to be measured? And also, you want to, some best practices are to, to build out conversion funnels and more conversion-oriented site, action-oriented site. It doesn't matter how great the EMS is if your website is not uh, conversion-oriented. And I also say just, you know, with the EMS, it's, it's such a robust tool and there's so many different things you can do. I think it's important to start simple and not try to do, you know, to bite off more than you can chew. Make those mistakes early. And once you have a, a better sense of how it works and how you can build successful campaigns, then you can uh, start to build and, uh, and expand. I, I often get asked is, well, you have this EMS thing, but Kentico also has a CMS thing. How would you differentiate those two for customers? 
Well, I think the great thing about it is that, uh, you know, the CMS is really just a tool to manage content. And, you know, I think years ago, the CMS was a, a really revolutionary tool, but now it's sort of commonplace. And, you know, obviously there are, there are uh, you know, Kintico is a great CMS and that I think uh, is a differentiator for, for, for folks wanting to manage their websites, you know, efficiently and easily. And, it, it, you know, I think the CMS is more about site administration and control Whereas the EMS is really going to empower marketers to uh, be in control of their data and their online marketing environment. I think it's I think it's it's where you know customer experience management and um, market automation is really the future of, of internet marketing. So I uh, you know hats off to Kentico for, you know for building such a great uh, tool. The question we ask everyone that that comes on the show is the world is full of all sorts of information. What are your best sources or things that you read to get business information, marketing information, and places you would recommend for folks? Well, there's so much out there. There's a couple places that I go. You know, I think, you know, a list apart is a great source. You know, Mashable is always great. You know, I think uh, in, in general, one of the great things to do is really to connect with other key influencers and people who are paying attention. You know, I've got a lot of great friends who, um, you know, I, I follow on Twitter or uh, who just you know, send me the latest stuff. I think um, finding other like-minded folks who are also out there seeing what's what's hot and what's new and what works is how you do it. Build relationships. Well, Ben, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you taking the time. If people wanted to get in touch with you or find out more information, how would they do that? Well, they could email me at ben at bluekeyinc.com or they could visit our website, bluekeyinc.com. I also have a, um, a number at uh, 843-628-6228. That's our main uh, Blue Key number. So uh, welcome to reach out to me in, in a variety of ways. I welcome any in- inquiries or questions. Excellent. Well, Ben, thanks once again for joining us, and uh, you have a great day. Thank you, Tom.